In this video, we're gonna break down a concept that most of your personal training textbooks just don't do a great job of really explaining and allowing you to understand. And that concept is the force velocity curve. We're not just gonna explain it, we're gonna talk about how you can use it in the gym and if and when it might matter for your clients. As we jump into a better understanding, and I'm gonna to try to go a simplified understanding of the force velocity curve, it only makes sense to start with the fact that this may or may not play an extremely high level role in some of your programming and training based upon the clients that you're working with but your understanding of it is important because it's important to understand that there is a relationship and that's really what this graph is going to give us some information on is that there is a relationship between our ability to generate force and the speed of movement and that relationship changes based upon whether we're talking about concentric eccentric or isometric muscle contractions and we can see all of those and I'll point all these out here on this slide. I think the easiest one to really understand to begin, which I don't have written on here, is going to be isometric contractions. But you know that an isometric contraction, we're generating force, but there's no change in the, in the angle or the joint, right? So if I'm holding a dumbbell at a 90 degree angle for my biceps, I got isometric contraction. So I am generating a certain amount of force and I have the capacity there, but there's no velocity that's happening. So that would be kind of where these eccentric and concentrics cross over. I think the next easiest to understand is what's going on in our concentric muscle contractions, right? When we have muscle shortening. Think about an exercise, let's say something, you know, more traditional like a bench press or a squat or a deadlift, something that you're able to move a lot of weight with. And maybe you have had the opportunity, the experience to do more maximal strength training somewhere between those one to three repetitions with really heavy loads. And if you can think back to when you were doing that, how fast were you moving, right? Especially with heavy, heavy weight, with those higher levels of force, although we might be trying, the lifter may be trying to move as fast as they can to overcome that weight, they're probably not moving very quickly. You end up moving relatively slow. So that would be what we call this max strength, this higher level of this concentric force velocity curve. And there's an inverse relationship, meaning that as I go, from higher to lower loads, I can move those things faster. And that makes sense with, let's say, something like a back squat, for example, where I may have a very heavy weight that I'm not able to concentrically move that quickly, but I am generating a lot of force. And the nice thing is, is especially as we start to look at athletic populations or those that are training for some sort of real specific physical performance, there may be reasons and there's definitely benefits of training on different areas in this force velocity curve, right? And especially if you get into sports performance, you'll find a lot more research and, and text on that as well. We don't talk about it quite as much with training general population, not because it's not important, but it may be less applicable inside of some of your programming. But if you look at it that way, well, max strength would happen higher up on this uh, concentric portion of the curve. And as we move down, you know, we talk about going from max strength into this strength speed, where now again, think about that back squat. If you lowered the weight a little bit, now you're gonna be able to move a little bit faster, right? Your, your capacity for velocity is gonna increase. And then as we move further down, somewhere right in the, call it the middle here, this is where optimal power training is gonna really happen. This is actually one of the reasons why you'll find for a lot of lifts, let's say like a back squat, you know, your, your maximal power training is probably gonna be uh, optimal somewhere in this 40% you know, 40 to 50%, somewhere around there of someone's one rep max. So it makes sense you'd have that power crossover. And then we move into what we call speed strength, where now speed is kind of taking more priority over the force production. And then we get to true speed and max speed, all right? So if we go uh, away from that back squat example for a second, you can think about something like sprinting, all right? Now in sprinting, if I'm doing a 40 yard dash, you know, I'm moving very quickly. My, my velocity, I have a high velocity of contraction that's happening, which means my force production is going to be on the lower end, especially in comparison to some of these other maximal strength type movements we're talking about. Eccentric is somewhat the opposite, and we won't go too much into it in this video and, and understand the differences because of the uh, amount of cross bridges and crossover that we have inside and you know, with those actin and myosin filaments. But either way, eccentric, it goes the opposite way, which means at these higher levels of velocity, at higher velocities with eccentric contractions, we're actually able to generate more force. So it's that inverse relationship between the eccentric and concentric. So maybe an easy way to visualize this might be something like if we go back to that bench press or that squat. Well, if I have a very, very high level of weight, all right, especially on the eccentric contraction, I'm only gonna be able to keep it so slow. Like the higher the level of force that's being applied to my body, the faster my body's gonna to wanna to go down in that eccentric contraction, all right? Also, as we have these rapid eccentric contractions to stop and slow down a certain weight, 
we're gonna have to generate a lot of force to overcome that. So you end up having this opposite relationship between eccentric and concentric. Again, I think you'll find probably some of the most information out there on the concentric side of the equation, especially as it relates to sports performance. But the eccentric is also very important as well because that also plays into our ability to, you know, build up strength in uh, deceleration, tendons and ligaments with plyometrics. It's all related here. Just wanted to give you guys at least somewhat of a simplified understanding of the force velocity curve with concentric contractions. The faster velocity, the lower the force is going to be, and it's gonna be the opposite with our eccentric muscle contractions. So as we've broken some of that down, if you are training more general population, even body composition change type clients, which is a huge component of the health and fitness industry, you may find this less applicable, but it's still important because it does point out the fact that there is a strong relationship between our ability to generate force and the speeds that we're moving. So as a coach, my takeaway is you want to be intentional with the velocities that you're training with and you want to be able to make that relationship and determination between what my goal is for the exercise and the velocities of speed and movement and tempo they should be using and making sure those two things are matching up. Hopefully this was helpful in understanding this force velocity curve as you guys are either A, past your personal training education or you're in the process of getting certified. Hit us up with any questions and I'll see you guys for the next video.